All right, guys. Today I'm going to show you my chili recipe that I make uh, when I cook chili. I love this recipe because it's very uh, versatile. I learned it in a restaurant when I was a teenager, and we used it in the restaurant to make a bowl of chili, open face chili cheeseburger sandwiches, and chili cheese fries, chili tater tots, just anything you can think. You know, Kansans, Oklahomans, chili is like gravy. Put that on everything. It's my favorite chili. Can't wait to show you not only this great recipe, but also how we can make it in a budget friendly way. So can't wait. Let's get going. All right, real quick, we're gonna go over the ingredients for today. I have tomato juice. We got that at Aldi's. I have three cans of chili beans. It doesn't really matter what brand. Uh, I discovered that some chili beans, they put corn syrup or sugar in the chili beans and some don't. I prefer the ones that don't have sugar, but whichever chili bean you like. I have some chili seasoning and taco seasoning. Now I learned this recipe by using one packet of McCormick taco seasoning and one packet of Williams brand chili seasoning per pound of meat. The individual packets and those brands significantly adds to the price of the meal. So I'm just using the bulk that we have today. If I didn't have this, I would just use the uh, Thrive Market seasonings that Ashley gets. Two cans of diced tomatoes, one small onion, and then start of the show, I have one pound of ground chuck. This I purchased as a roast, $4.99 a pound on sale. And then I ground it up myself, divided it. There was a two pound roast, so I divided it into two one pound servings and we just put that into Ziploc bags for storage. So those are our ingredients today. We're gonna come out around $12 worth of ingredients and this recipe, the way I'm making it today is gonna have four to six servings depending on what you're doing with it, uh, maybe more. But that still gets us in the uh, two to three dollar per serving range, which I feel like is a very budget friendly meal. All right, just a little bit of prep work. So the first thing I'm going to do is my onion. I went ahead and peeled my onion. Now you'll notice I leave, I cut the root off, but I leave the, the end intact and I'll show you why. So if you cut that in half and you decide when you wanna you go to chop this, this holds the onion together. So you can work all the way up to the end and the root ball there holds the onion together. I learned that also in the restaurant. It was a great tip. I've been doing that for 20 years. I love it. But those days are past me now. I'm going to chop that off because Ashley has the best kitchen gadget ever. So we can just finally chop our onion. And that is with the Tupperware chopper. So this is a super easy device to use. Just pop a little safety cover off, take your blade out. It sits in there like so. I'm gonna throw my onions in there. Put the lid on. And we're just gonna give it a few pulls. And finally chopped onions. I love this thing. This is the best thing ever. It's available via Ashley's Tupperware page and there will be a link in the description. Now we're going to go ahead and get our seasoning going. So uh, a seasoning packet is about one to one and a quarter ounces, which is roughly equal to about two tablespoons. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons of chili powder in here. And again, today I'm using this Chilio, uh, but I've done this with Williams of McCormick, uh, just about any seasoning, chili seasoning you like. And the same is true with the uh, the taco seasoning. So 
about two tablespoons here. Spices are fat soluble. And this was the strangest thing I'd ever been shown, but I'm just going to take some vegetable oil, sprinkle some in there. Now, if you're using really fatty meat, you don't really need to do this. You can just cook it in with your meat and it's fine. My ground chunk is, chuck is pretty lean, so I want this these seasonings, the spices, the oils from the spices to go ahead and start dissolving out. So I'm going to make a paste out of my seasoning and just let it rest. Right. Got that. Now I'm gonna get my canned goods open and we'll get cooking. All right, so today, we have several different can openers. This is the Tupperware safety can opener. I really like this because it cuts it off at the top and I don't have to worry about fetching the lid out of my can. Well, I'm a bit of a klutz and I've cut myself doing that. So you just go around the can and then bam, comes right off. It's very cool. So we're just gonna get all these open. So my pan's hot. I'm gonna throw my hamburger in there. Just about done. I'm gonna rake it away from the center. Get just a little bit of oil right there. And again, this is a very lean meat. Uh, it's almost, it's too lean if you're wanting to do like hamburger patties or something, because there's just not enough moisture. It'd be a super dry hamburger. But it's pretty good for, for chili. You don't have to worry about draining it. You can just barely see there's almost no fat. I'm gonna go ahead and put my seasoning in there. And we're gonna put my onions in there and I'm just gonna let those saute up in the center. Just a little bit more oil. My hamburger will finish cooking around the edges here and then I'll mix it all together. I like to do this in one pot. And that way, when I add my tomato juice, it kind of deglazes the pan, and it gets keeps all those flavors right there in the in the the meal. And I don't have to worry too much if, like, say, some of the hamburgers not fully fried at the beginning, because when I bring it to boil and simmer it down later at the end, any uncooked hamburger is going to finish off then. So, to me, this is just the best way to do it. So. 
cooking down those spe uh, spices. I'm gonna start mixing this together, and just letting it saute in. Now, if you're doing it in two pans, you could do your uh, do your hamburger like in a skillet, and then go ahead in your pot. Go ahead and start your uh, onions. I used to cook the onions in with the burger, but I discovered if I do that in the pot the chili's going to be in, the flavor's uh, retained a lot better. So I'm just going to work this through. Okay, so some of my onions are just starting to become translucent. Some are still a little more. That's perfect. I like to have a little bit of crunch to my onions in my chili. So, we're on to the next step. So, about a quarter cup of water. And that's for any seasoning package you need, it's going to say to add about a quarter cup of water with the seasoning. In go the beans. I leave the juice in there because it's seasoned for chili. And the tomatoes. And I'm gonna give this a good stir. Now as I stir this, I'm really going to scrape the bottom. I want to make sure that I'm not losing any of my seasoning or onions to the bottom of the pan. And So, as you can see, just from the juice from the tomatoes and from the beans, it's already a pretty thick stew, right? Just a little bit of juice. And I wouldn't add too much tomato juice to this if my intention was to do like chili cheeseburgers or chili cheese fries, because you don't want it to be too juicy. It just makes everything soggy. But this chili is destined to be eaten uh, as a stew. So I'm gonna add some tomato juice. So this is a 46 ounce container, but I'm only gonna add about a third of that. And that just gives it enough soupiness. So if you wanna add crackers or, uh, Ashley always cooks some macaroni separate to add to my chili. So it gives it some, some juiciness to be able to absorb that uh, that carb item. So now, I'm going to throw the lid on here and we're going to let it simmer. So at this point, it's also not a bad idea just to go ahead and get a little taste and just to check your seasonings. All right, so it's it's got just a, a little bit of a tomato flavor from the juice and the tomato, but I can really pick up on the seasoning, the taco powder and the chili. If it was too bland at this point, you would want to add more so that as it, as it cooks down, it will mix with the oil here on the top and those flavors come through. The uh, one thing I like to do with this chili is I cook it today, then I put it in the refrigerator overnight and let the flavors all meld overnight. And that really does bring out the flavor of the seasoning packet so much more. So you can hear it start to make noise. So I just come over, I'm gonna give it a quick stir. Now, as you can see, this is a, this is a 12 quart I'm sorry, no, it's a, an eight quart pot. 
and it's about three quarters full. You know, it's plenty of plenty of chili for four people for uh, for dinner. And like I said, it's about twelve dollars, which is a little more expensive than norm most of our budget meals. But you know, once in a while or as a splurge, I feel like this is still a very reasonable meal for four adults. You know, twelve bucks. You're but you're looking at about three dollars a person for dinner, and I think that's a pretty good price. Now, if you use this as an add-on, which, so one thing my grandmother used to do is she would take her bread pan, line it with aluminum foil, divide the chili up into aluminum uh, foil, put that in the freezer, freeze it, and then she would have these little loaves of chili that she would just keep stored. And if she was doing hamburgers or if she was doing a tater tots one night, just pull out a pull out one of the little bricks of chili, throw that in the microwave. You know, she always used a pot because uh, microwaves weren't readily available in the 1950s. But you know, heat up the chili that you've stored, and it freezes really well. And then you know, so you can really stretch it over a lot of meals that way. This is going to just be dinner tonight. So, uh, like I said, I'm just going to keep an eye on it, let it simmer, just give it a stir once in a while. And that smells so good. And the only other thing I've ever done to this recipe is, so depending on the chili seasoning I'm, use, I'm using, I sometimes add a little more chili powder. Uh, not all chili seasoning mixes are the same. So uh, the this one is okay, uh, but some of them, I'm using a store brand uh, chili seasoning packet. Pack I'll go ahead and add some more chili powder just to kind of pep it up a little bit. And we let it simmer. And it's just now starting to simmer. I'm gonna give it a quick stir. Again, I just like to keep an eye on it and make sure that it's not sticking. now this has been simmering for about 20 minutes uh, start to finish this took about 45 minutes to do and it's a little longer than some of our meals but 45 minutes to an hour for for dinner uh, and that's including uh, the simmer time I tested it while it was simmering tasted it and the flavors are where I want them uh, again you can add a little more uh, chili powder or salt uh, depending on you know your your preferences but I think this is pretty good to go and we are uh, ready for dinner